morning, guys. It's 8 a.m., day after St. Patrick's Day, and we're heading to the liquor store to help select a single barrel of bourbon. Let's go drink some castrate whiskey. <laughs> so in pure bourbon van fashion, our audio did not turn out. We're working on it, but in the meantime, <laughs> the footage itself looks good, so you're going to hear us talking a lot on this video and see some of our footage, some of the B-roll, and that sort of thing, and uh, we're sorry about that. We'll do better in the future, maybe. Or we'll try. We'll try. Well, anyways, one of the voices that you're going to hear on this video is Angela, who is the owner of Trailhead Liquor in Bend, Oregon, and here she is to tell us a little more about the barrel selection process. This particular barrel happened to be offered to Bend South, and unfortunately, the owner, Allison, was unavailable to join us, and since she was willing to split the barrel anyway, she had us go ahead and select for her on her behalf. The way you find out whether or not you get a barrel is generally asking your reps, sometimes many, many times before you actually get a barrel, sometimes you never get a barrel, and sometimes you just get offered a barrel. It can go lots of different ways depending on your relationship with the rep and the availability of the barrel itself. In this particular circumstance, these will be bottled at barrel proof. So the samples we got today are exactly what you could expect once it's actually bottled. The barrel we're selecting is Heaven's Door, which I'm sure you all know is associated with Bob Dylan. That's right, that's his design that graces the front of the bottle, his signature on the back of the label. This is a Tennessee-based distillery that sources their product from Midwest Grain Products, or MGPI in Indiana, and Tennessee Distillers Group, or TDG in Tennessee, and they also make some of their own product. And here's Angela again to tell us what we're looking for. The idea is for us to pick something that appeals to a wider audience. It's just not my preference, it's, it's what I think the rest of my customers will prefer and share on social media that it's such a great bottle that we're gonna come back for more. So we were lucky enough to try three samples today, two from Tennessee, one from Indiana. Glasses one and two were the Tennessee product with a mash bill of 70% corn, 22% rye, and 8% malt, aged five years in char number four barrels. And glass number three is the MGPI product with a mash bill of 75% corn, 21% rye, and 4% malt, aged six years in a char number three medium toast barrel. Proofs varied from 115.8 to 122.4. And as we do all our tastings, we tasted them from one side to the other, and then all the way back, A-B testing, clearing our palates with spring water and thyme to make sure that we were getting the best representation of each of these whiskeys. After all that, we started sharing our thoughts and narrowing down the choices. This is where it got interesting, because the biggest surprise for us was that the MGP product from Indiana was the first to go. We did a one, two, three, throw up your number that you want to eliminate and we were pretty much all on target. Even though it was the longest aged and it was the lowest proof, the flavors fell a little flat, there was a little bitterness on the finish, and it just didn't live up to the nose that was so great. Glass two was our highest proof and an easy front runner. Yeah, right out of the gate, we all liked it. It had a big punch of spice and a ton of sweetness and it seemed really well balanced, mm -hmm. but the more we sipped on it, the more that spice continued to build Eventually it overwhelmed that sweetness and it just wasn't that much of a pleasant sip. And as time went by, it was totally outdone by glass number one. I feel like glass number one was kind of like the little engine that could. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, from the start, it was pleasant enough. We liked it right off the bat. It was sweet, it was flavorful. It didn't have the best nose of the bunch, but the more that we tasted it, the longer time went on, more new flavors came out of the woodwork and they were identifiable, they were approachable. And this glass just stood out as the one that would be the most satisfying for the greatest number of people. And it certainly was for us. And I would agree that approachability made this the easy clear winner. Uh, caramel cream, rich vanilla frosting, leading to soft cinnamon, light brown sugar, and dry oak on the finish. You know I love dry oak. <laughs> it was well balanced and sweet with just the right amount of spice. It just emerged as the consensus favorite. And like you said, in the end, it was an easy decision and uh, one that we're really excited about. We cannot wait for everybody to try this bottle. So we expect this barrel pick to arrive at Trailhead Liquor and Ben South Liquor sometime in June. A big thanks to Angela from Trailhead Liquor and Allison from Ben South Liquor for letting us be a part of this thing. We had a great time, we learned a lot, and we can't wait for that bottle to show up from wherever we are. To wherever you are. Cheers. Cheers. Let's have more of this. <laughs>